Wake the f up, samurai. We have a city to burn. Hello again everyone and welcome back to another episode and this week once again we are hitting up the brilliant fantastic car boots and it is a real theme this week the two things we see a lot of are strategy guides and controllers so this is all about controlling the strategy of the car boots before we head out to the car boot, I just want to remind you all watching at home, if you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button. It really helps the channel and also subscribe. So I put new videos out every Saturday live at 5, as well as bonus content throughout the week. And I really want you folks along for the ride. Now, off to the car boot. Here we go then, bright and early on a Sunday and time for another car boot. And one of the very first stores I came across had a lot of games. Like, I know immediately we, you're thinking this is probably resellers, but, you know, sometimes there is some good prices. And, you know, at the end of the day, people find the games. If they sell them, I'm happy to buy them if the price is right. So I always check through piles of DS games just in case there is any Pokemon games because you literally never know. Like, it's very rare to see, like, floppy disks like that now. Um... Also, always kind of go through these massive bowls or boxes of Game Boy games. You never know what you're going to find in there. It just takes finding one kind of rare Pokemon or like decent old Game Boy game in there and you can come up absolute tops. But, you know, one of the main problems with some of these kind of reseller stalls is the fact they do normally price everything pretty much exact market value. It's not very likely you're going to get a fantastic deal, but, you know, especially if you throw their games on the floor. But, yeah, it's worth kind of picking through these stuff because, you know, you might find something that you have been looking for for a long while that you don't mind paying that little bit extra for. Or, you know, it's just good for some of the games you don't see as often. You know, we're not really going to be picking up amazing games for a pound here. We might have to pay up a little bit, such as you can see at the back here. They're hiding the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3, but on to the next door. Years One thing I have been looking for a lot more recently at the car boots is vintage toys. Kind of the 80s and 90s stuff from my childhood. And, you know, it is one of those things where you have to get stuck in. I do kind of like these stores where they just have tons of stuff to dig through. Another thing which I have been looking for recently a lot more is comic books. And, you know, that is another thing where you just really have to dig in. But, you know, I, I'm very particular of what I'm looking for. I'm trying to kind of stick to that video game base based comic book mentality as little bit as much as possible so it's mainly dc stuff here so nothing really too interesting for myself today one thing that i'm seeing more and more at the car boots is controllers for consoles i know if it was consoles break or they just have spares or what they just find them knocking around in the back of a cupboard but i'm seeing them more and more at the car boots and to be honest they are something i don't buy very often as you have no idea if they're going to work you know they could be corroded with batteries they could just be broken you'll just be getting rid of them but they are something i don't buy very often but you know me i just say something and then do the absolute opposite so yeah remember that later in the video and it'll all make sense but yeah i was just digging for this bag like checking all these controllers a lot of these are like corroded a lot of damage these are the kind of ones that i'm not going to touch with a barge pole because you know opening up these 360 controllers you can just see that the batteries have leaked or they've got damp or they're damaged you know even if the sticks work and everything else works if the battery compartment and the kind of electronics inside are corroded there's just no point touching them i did kind of dig through these bags of games but you know you're never going to really find anything too amazing in here but that doesn't stop me from just digging through and seeing what there was Here's a decisive one. Some people love it, most people hate it. The Xbox 360 Connect. Of course, I do have one in my collection, but I am looking to add a boxed one just to have displayed on the shelf, but I'm looking for it cheap. I don't really want to pay £10 for Connect, so I did pass this one up. They always say it takes one good stall at the car boot to make your day, and this one was one of the best stands I have ever seen at a car boot. They had literally everything I wanted. Which are your books? Um, quid each for the, the paperback one. Ideally, you'd like three or four quid for the back. It's a nice hardback. 
That's right, two quid for the original Cyberpunk tabletop RPG playbook. You know I'm picking that up. And this guy had some amazing guides, and they were super cheap. Strategy guides are one of my favorite things to pick up at the car booth, especially when they have decent caliber guides like this. We have amazing RPGs in there, Zelda guides, even Final Fantasy, but I had to get a deal. Might be easier. How much is it for the whole stack of books? Thirteen strategy guides for fifteen quid. Seriously, some of these guides you could not have got one of these posted off eBay for that amount. This is one of the best deals I have ever got, and I have got some good strategy guide deals before. It just shows you, folk, you should not sleep on strategy guides. People are just passing them up, and there's just me over here picking them all up. I'm actually starting to run out of room for strategy guides, but if I keep getting deals like this, I'm going to keep adding them. But the only disadvantage is, of course, of picking up strategy guides. They are heavy, so back to the car with this massive bag. As I said earlier in the video, I have been looking at more comics recently, and these were all 10p each. But one of the issues I have with comics is I have no idea what I am looking at. These were mainly kind of X-Men ones, which I haven't got the biggest interest in. I was trying to kind of make a deal. If I don't got like a really good deal, these I'd have probably bought them in bulk. But, you know, I need to get some more kind of knowledge of comics to really know what I'm buying. But, you know, this was a very good deal. Kind of looking back, I may have regretted passing this one up, but you can't buy everything. So back to the car with those strategy guys. One amazing stall straight to another. Everything in the box was a pound. This is like waving a red rag to a bull. I was gonna be diving straight in. This yeah. is the kind of stuff I love. Rummaging few boxes and boxes of stuff, knowing that everything is about a pound. The first thing I did pull out was some brain training and some more brain training. So you can either have 50p for brain training or 25p for brain training, but there was just loads of cool little bits found a memory card for 25p for the playstation one can never have enough memory cards so definitely going to pick that up but this is the way for people to sell these kind of random accessories and bits like that just chuck them in a box put a pound on everything it's just so much easier there was so many cool little bits to kind of dig through here like bits for your game boy disney infinity stands xbox hard drives those wee wheels that no one knows what to do with and you know i was gonna dig through all of these boxes to find the very best items hidden in below here's something you don't see every day kind of the face plates full of guitar hero guitars and like who thought a plain black faceplate would sell like that is the most boring faceplate you can physically have on a guitar but there were so many boxes on this stand to go through there was controllers for a pound like as i said earlier i do not buy controllers very often from car boots but if they're a pound each i will take the risk you know as long as they look like they're probably going to work I'd, I would stand to lose one pound of the controller. If I can find a controller that looks cool at the car boot for a quid, I'm going to pick it up. I couldn't believe when I pulled this out. A Game Gear game for one pound in the plastic case. It might not be the most exciting Game Gear of, game of all time, but it was a pound. And it was just everywhere I pulled out in this was something more exciting than the thing I found before. And it's the thing, it was all so cheap. I think this was a store that was like just clearing stock. So yeah, I was just gonna keep digging through here. Like finding a memory card for the Xbox 360, you just don't see them that often. And for a quid, you know, it's kind of rude to pass it up. But yeah, there was a lot to go through here. But you knew I was gonna go through every single bit. There are two ways to make a controller infinitely cooler to me. One way is to make it see-through, and the other way is to add on as many buttons that are not required as possible. I'm talking about auto fire, turbo, all those kind of weird buttons. Don't just give me a basic SNES pad and make it crazy. So, you know, quit on these controllers, definitely gonna pick them up. You know, the madder the better. And yeah, there was so much stuff to dig through on this stall, but yeah, I grabbed quite a lot of stuff. But I'm gonna show you folks that when we get back into the games room. 
We'd seen plenty of strategy guides and even more controllers, but as of yet, we hadn't seen many games. So it was good to see a couple of games on this next stall. Nothing again that really stood out, mainly kind of cheap titles. But, you know, you've always got to check through. You never know when it's going to be a hidden gem. And, you know, looking around, there was still a few games hiding between places, but nothing too exciting today. Kind of your Call of Duties, your kind of low-level games. Nothing that's really jumping out at me, but, you know, the search continues throughout the day. One thing that did stand out to me on this next tour is they did have a Pokemon Happy Meal toy, which it does kind of sad me that McDonald's are not doing plastic Happy Meal toys anymore, but, you know, I suppose it is better for the greater good of the world. This is one of the weirder lightsabers, per se, I've seen for a while. I think this is Ray's one from The Force Awakens, but it just doesn't really do anything, you know. If I find a lightsaber, I want it to light up or at least do something cool, so this one was a little bit too basic for my liking. I have had to cut the sound here because the person was selling a CD player or a record player and was deciding to play some licensed music very, very loudly, but I really wanted to have a better look at this Pulp Fiction DVD. And, you know, I don't pick up very many DVDs at all anymore, let alone at the car boots, but this one really stood out to me as it was kind of cool. You know, it had some negatives from the actual film, so it was just in a nice, cool display. And, you know, Pulp Fiction is an absolute classic film, so... I know if I could pick this one up cheap, I was going to pick it up as, you know, it's the weird stuff like this you don't see all the time. It's worth grabbing. This next door had absolutely boxes of games. There was nothing too exciting, but, you know, once again, you have to dig through these things. But in a weird theme, when the car boots seem to bring something up, they just seem to bring up continuously. So there was loads and loads of controllers. You know, the thing I said earlier in the video, I'm not going to be picking up, but this guy had boxes of controllers and light guns and cool stuff none of these were really the official ones but you know i managed to pick up a light gun for like 50p for the playstation 1 and the playstation 2 an extra light gun i'm always going to pick up if it's super cheap but yeah there were some really nice controllers in here and you know the prices were good as i said with anything like controllers or any kind of electronics you have no guarantee it's gonna work so you kind of just have to take the gamble but when things are pretty cheap i'm probably going to take the gamble that's the thing if i can get a clear third party n64 controller at the car boot in 2022 you know i'm gonna pick it up cheap and you know I wasn't too interested in many of the games around here, but cheap controllers have them. So something that might actually surprise you is they do not own a physical copy of Guitar Hero 2 or 3 for the PlayStation 2. But, you know, I keep looking at picking up the Guitar Hero games, especially the older ones. Like I have most of the stuff on the Xbox 360, but... I didn't even have a guitar for the PlayStation 3. Also, I really love these kind of mini wizard. It looks a bit more like Simon to me. And yeah, there's some cool stuff on this stand. So this was the guy, if you remember, a couple of weeks ago, I picked up the Sega Pico. So this was the same seller. And yeah, he had some really cool stuff. But I was seconds too late on an absolutely massive bundle of kind of Commodore 64 tape games. I literally just missed them. You saw that guy packing them up just then. There was loads of old magazines which were super cool and he's kind of this weird knockoff N64. If you've seen my previous video where I had the plug and play HDMI console, these things are always good for a bit of a laugh but you know as the game room fills up with more and more stuff, space does come a bit of a premium. I was tempted by these Commodore like old school books magazines sorry if they had been like nintendo sega or you know more console based i'd have probably picked them up i'm not the biggest fan of the commodore you know flame me in the com comments comments below but yeah left them behind for someone else back on a hunt for games and another box full of xbox 360 games and these are always great to just pick through and kind of find anything of interest or of value you're always going to find a lot of sports games but Again, the sports game we are looking out for at the minute is FIFA 16 because it has that £2 CEX trade-in. So, pick it out for 50p. Trade-in for £2 is a nice, simple, quick deal. I was just thinking about just grabbing another game just to round it up to a quid. Wasn't really that interested in any of the FIFA games, but I did pick up this Viet Cong game for the original Xbox. As you know, it's got to the point now where if I find a game for the original Xbox... And it's cheap and I don't own it. I am going to pick it up because I have a humongous original Xbox collection. And I just want to let it grow. It's such a cheap console to collect for. 
it's just kind of rude not to. And, you know, I always do the same with PlayStation 2. But with PlayStation 2, I am a bit pickier with the games I pick up as there's so much shovelware. Here is my biggest regret of today's car boot, and I'm not going to do this again. At the minute, I am on a real Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles collecting high. I've been picking up figures left, right, and center. And you know what? For now on, I'm just going to pick up every figure I see. I instantly regret not picking these up. I think I must have just got distracted by a box of games. Again, nothing too exciting to write home about here. Mainly kind of just kind of your titles you see all the time. But the thing is, you need to have a good scan and make sure you don't miss anything because you never know what's hiding in the box. Once again, another console and a box full of controllers. This car boot was really stacked with hardware this week. So yeah, I was having a look at this big fat PlayStation 3. Basically, I just wanted to make sure it wasn't a backwards compatible one. You know, the awesome one that can play PlayStation 1, 2 and 3 games. Sadly, it was not. There was another PlayStation controller, but I think they wanted like four quid for this PlayStation controller, which, you know, when I picked one up earlier in the day for a quid, I'm not really going to be too concerned with. I was looking at this big old fat Xbox Duke controller, but sadly the bit that connects to the Xbox was missing, so passed it up. We were coming up to the final stores at the Arming Hall car boot, and there was this last store, which was packed with a lot of games, but there was a lot of not really a much of a much. I think somebody must have picked through this store earlier in the day and really got the good titles to begin with. I have been tempted by those Simpsons DVDs so much recently. I wouldn't pay £5 each, but if I could get the seasons for a pound or so each, I'd probably be tempted to get it. Same as I was tempted to pick this game up, but I did pass in the end. You know, there is a lot of shovelware on a DS, so you have to kind of be careful you don't just buy <laughs> games like Peppa Pig. You know, <laughs> you know. Sometimes those games are funny, but most oh, of the time they are just kind of a bit rubbishy. But, you know, it was coming up to the end of Arming Hall. I was going to head on to one more car boot after this. The final thing I saw if I left Arming Hall was this massive stack of PlayStation 2 demos, which were lovingly stored in this plastic storage device, but they were asking 20 quid for the whole bundle. Like, for demo discs, not really. Like, if these had been cheap, I'd have probably picked them up, but 20 quid, pass. <laughs> Just because you never know, I did think I would go to the park and ride car boot, and it was on my way home. There was a couple of bits here. I did manage to pick up this Xbox demo for, I think it's a quid or two quid, but you know, it's a really good demo. I remember this one. Planet Futurama game was an absolute banger back in the day. I did also pick up a Star Wars DVD, which I'll show you when we get back to the games room, but this car boot just hasn't really kicked off this year. It just hasn't. I don't know what it is. I just don't think it can contend with the power that is Arming Hall. But, you know, I do see the advantages and disadvantages of this car boot. It is hard standing. So, you know, if it's a slightly wet day, it's a lot better. But, you know, it's not really kicking off at the minute. They are doing a special promotion throughout May and June. So it's just £5 a pitch. So hopefully that will help bring people back to this car boot. But if not we always have arming hall there is more and more car boots picking up in my area as it gets warmer and the days get longer so back to the games room what an amazing car boot that was but arming hall never fails to deliver i don't think i've ever seen so many cheap controllers at one car boot and you knew i was going to take full advantage of that fact so let's get into what i picked up this time Starting off, we have three video games. Nothing too exciting, but these were all really cheap. I think these were all 50p each. So first we have Viet Cong Purple Haze for the original Xbox. And you know, this is a console. If I see cheap games for, I am gonna pick up. I am well on my way to having a huge original Xbox collection, and I just wanna keep it growing. You may be wondering why I picked up this copy of FIFA 16. If you've been watching my previous videos, you'll know this trades in to CX at the moment for £2. So if I could buy a copy of this for 50p and trade in for £2, kind of a no-brainer. Finally, I picked up this original Xbox demo, and these are such a zeitgeist for me. I used to buy official Xbox magazine every month and play these games. It was just a cheap way to find out what games really earned your hard-earned pocket money. This had some great demos on here. We had Futurama, which is becoming a fairly rare game for the original Xbox, as well as Jurassic Park Operation Genesis, which is one of my favourite games of all time because, of course, I love me some Jurassic Park. I keep saying I'm not going to pick up any more DVDs, then I just find cool ones at the car boot. So the first one you did see was this Pulp Fiction one, which is super cool as it kind of comes with like some frames for the actual film. I don't know why there's two of those in here, the exact same frame by the looks of things. 
as well as like a little booklet and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool, you know. It's an absolute classic Pulp Fiction. It's a cool to add that into the collection, especially in this nice collector's case. The other one I picked up, which I didn't quite manage to film, was this Star Wars trilogy. And it was the original trilogy, the first time it was put on DVD for the very first time. And this is actually brand new and sealed, and will probably stay that way. It's not exactly going to become the most valuable thing ever. You can buy these brand new on eBay for about eight quid, but pick this up for a quid, so pretty cool little pickup. Speaking of Star Wars, we all know I love any kind of collectible card game. We have this Young Jedi collectible card game, which is brand new. It is from 1999, so it must have been released about the same time as The Phantom Menace. As yet, it says on the top there, for episode one. This was just a quid or two, you know, cool little Star Wars card game. Can't go wrong. Probably one of the most exciting things this week was that store that had all that stuff to rummage through that was all a pound each. That is the best way to do car boots. Just have stock and get rid of it at a pound each. And I'm going to go through all the stuff I picked up. We're going to go super quick as there is lots of it. So, this little memory card for the PlayStation 1 was just 25p. A very good bargain. Then I managed to pick up this Game Gear game, which is in the little tiny plastic slip case. It's always really annoying to get these. It is Sega Game Pack 4-in-1. So nothing really to write home about. But the surprise pickup is this Xbox 360 memory card. So it is 512 megabytes. It's very unassuming. They were selling it for £2 in the store. It was a pound of the car boot. These trade in at CX for eight quid. This little tiny memory card. I cannot believe it trades in for that. Pretty crazy. So keep an eye out for these hiding at the car boots. I picked up so many controllers this week. So first we're going to go through the SNES one. So check out this controller. Who needs a SNES controller with this many buttons? It is called the Angler and it is it's just awful, but it's also fantastic in the way it's so terrible. This was obviously a pound in the store, it would have cost you three pounds. In a slightly more normal design for a SNES controller, we have this Game Commander. So it does look more like your classic SNES controller, but with lots of buttons. And sadly, it does sound a little bit rattly. As I said, all of these are untested as yet, but I will be testing them in the next few days. At first, I thought this controller was for the Super Nintendo, but I think it is for the Mega Drive. As it says on there, it's an SG Pro Pad, and it has the free buttons, which makes me think it's more for the Mega Drive. But this thing screams 90s. It has all the turbo and auto fire buttons, and it is in clear plastic. The material of the gods during the 90s. I'm really, really in love with this one. Next up, we have the Shark Pad Pro for the N64. And again, it is in that classic see-through 90s plastic. And I love it so much. But the thing is, they seem to have taken an N64 controller, which we all know was an odd shape, and made it even weirder. It's like, I miss having the sides of the controller. Yeah, definitely a bit of a weird one. Back on more familiar ground, and we have the absolute classic PlayStation 1 controller. Just in the classic PlayStation Grey, this was just a pound, and you know, if I can ever pick up official PlayStation trolls for a quid, gonna grab them. Finally, I picked up this 4 Gamers light gun for just 50p. This is just kind of a classic light gun, the bonus being it does work for the PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2, so I'd definitely be able to get some light gun action in with this one. Here we have then this absolutely massive stack of strategy guides and rule books. This was £15. All of these books for £15. And I tell you what, I'm going to top the value as I go through these and you'll be amazed how much value we got for that 15 quid. When I was approaching the stall at the car boot, this was the guide that was laying on top. The cyberpunk role playing game of the future rule book. This is the second edition and this is such an iconic RPG game like this came way before the Cyberpunk 2077 they have recently done this in its fourth edition for Cyberpunk Red which is more tied into the game this guide by itself goes for about 15 quid so paying 15 quid for this entire bundle in the first book we have broke even if you've ever played a tabletop RPG, you'll know one of the ways to really improve your game is using expansion books, such as this Solo of Fortune 2, which can be used with Cyberpunk 2nd Edition. So I don't really know a lot about this book, but I will be looking to play a campaign of Cyberpunk soon, and I'm sure this will add some cool stuff. So this book alone, once again, would set you back around £10. 
Cyberpunk was not the only RPG game hidden in this bundle of strategy guides. We also had this Conspiracy X game, which I know very little about, but reading the blurb on the back, it does sound pretty cool. It's basically about a sleeper cell alien invasion, and you kind of play someone trying to stand up against it. It's not very valuable, only worth a couple of quid, but cool to add to the collection nonetheless. Here we go then onto the video game strategy guides and first up we have the guides for both Naruto Ultimate Ninja 1 and 2. These are both games I don't know very much about, I've never watched any Naruto let alone played the games. Looking online it was pretty hard to find these two especially in sold listings. They look to be about £5 of value each but you know I'm not going to put a massive value on these. So it seems whoever owned these strategy guides before me was a massive fan of JRPGs. And there is a couple of guides from that genre in this bundle. First up, we have The Last Remnant, which was an absolutely incredible game back on the Xbox 360. This one has gained a little bit of value from the $12.99 you can see there from back in the day at GameStation, RIP. This one's selling for about £17 to £20 at the moment. Continuing with the JRPG theme, we have this guide for Star Ocean The Last Hope. So this one's selling about the same price you paid for it in the store. It's about £12.99 to £15. But this is not the only Star Ocean guide we picked up in this bundle. The other Star Ocean guide I picked up was for Star Ocean First Departure. So this game was back on the PSP. And this guide, the prices seem to be all over the place. From about £30 to about £65. So I think we can probably meet somewhere in the middle and say this guide by itself could be worth around 50 quid. When we talk about JRPGs, the first thing that always comes to mind is Final Fantasy. So it is incredible to add these 20th anniversary Final Fantasy 1 and 2 guides into the collection. These were actually super hard to even find sold listings of. I couldn't find any in the UK. Had to go international. So looks like about the Final Fantasy 1 is about 10 to 12 pounds. This one's around 20 pounds. But super cool to add into the collection. Really happy to add these ones. Another Final Fantasy guide in this bundle was this Dissidia Final Fantasy guide and it's a really cool one from Brady Games. One of the best things about this one is it does have a massive fold out poster bit at the back if I can stretch my arms long enough which looks super cool. This book is really cool, only worth around £10 but still cool to have in the bundle. Of course I love strategy guides, but what I love even more is hardback strategy guides, especially if they have a cool lenticular cover. So this is Epic Mickey 2, The Power of 2. I couldn't really find out how much this strategy guide was worth, but for the artwork and the colours and that lenticular cover alone, I think it's super cool. Last but certainly not least, we have this Legend of Zelda Hyrule Warriors hardback strategy guide, and this thing is a thing of absolute beauty. I love the Zelda strategy guides so much. They are just always so cool. And these are the kind of guides that just go up and up in price. When you get official Zelda guides in the hardback edition, because they're such beautiful works of art in book form, these things go for about 30 to 50 quid. And I'm really happy to add this one into my collection now, as I think in years to come, this one is going to get super expensive. Let's just break that down then for a minute. I spent £15 on all of those strategy guides and with a conservative estimate, there seems to be around £150 worth of strategy guides. This is what I'm trying to tell people. Do not sleep on these guides. Some of them are worth tons of money. Of course there's loads out there that are not worth anything, but if you see them at the car boot, don't pass them up. Thank you everyone for watching this video. It has been super long, but that was a very, very good car boot. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like. Remember, subscribe as I put new videos out every Saturday Live at 5, as well as bonus videos. Thanks again for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. And as always, keep playing the game. See you all soon.